before I start today, I want to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which I stand, sit and speak with you today, the Daruk people of the Aurora Nation. And I want to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging and extend that out to any Indigenous and First Nations people that might be joining us on the call today or listening to this on a replay. And today, as we interact, as we share our stories, as we communicate, may we all just tread gently on their land. So today we are here to talk about inclusive language. And as part of today's session, we're gonna be covering what is inclusive language, why it's important, and how we can all use more inclusive language as we go out and communicate with our colleagues, our teams, our communities, just the world in general if for humanity. But before we get into all of that good stuff, let's just do a bit of a pulse check in the room to see where we're all at. So we're gonna do that good old show of hands, okay? So show of hands, let me know if anyone here is an expert on inclusive language, kind of knows it all and does not even need the session. No, okay, well, that, that's good. At least we've clarified that you're here to at least listen to what I have to say, so that's good. Now you'll notice as well that when I asked that question, even my hand didn't go up because I'm not saying that I'm an expert and that's the beauty about inclusive language. It is constantly evolving and growing. It's not as simple as the alphabet, you know, in the standard English alphabet, we've got 26 letters. And once we know it, we know it all. But with inclusive language, it is the fact that we keep learning, growing, evolving. And the more that we learn about humanity, the more that we learn about people, how they want to identify, and that beautiful intersectionality that is in our community, the more our language changes. And that's what we're gonna look at today. All right, so back to our show of hands. Who here has heard about the term inclusive language? Kind of knows what it means, but wants to know a bit more, get deeper into it and find out and learn more about it. All right, good show of hands, thank you. Okay. And Anyone here who maybe has heard the term and doesn't know what it means or has never even heard of the term. And that's okay too, because we all start somewhere. Okay, thanks Wayne. Thanks for, uh, for being honest and for sharing that because this is a safe space and we want to acknowledge that everybody you know, is on that journey and we all start somewhere. All right, so for the people that have kind of said, I know a bit about inclusive language, I kind of get what it means. Pop in the chat and let me know what it is that you believe is inclusive language. In your own words, what is inclusive language? I'm gonna open up my chat so I can see what is coming in. Thanks, Rain. Yes, what is inclusive language in your own terms? Language that doesn't cause separation or segregation of people. Great, Wayne, thank you. Language that allows everyone to belong. Language that allows people to feel like they belong. Yes, taking stuff off my slides. Language that doesn't exclude people in the room or in the team, yes. So it's very much around using language that includes everybody, right? Which is kind of what inclusive language is. I might actually ask someone to, to come off mute and, and share with us and, uh, let me see, maybe we'll go to, who put the last comment in? Brenda, I can see your comment in. If you can unmute, I know you're not on camera, but if you can unmute and share with us a bit about your experience of inclusive language. If you're able to unmute, give us a thumbs up, otherwise we'll go to somebody who's on camera. Oh yeah, you can unmute, let's go. Sure, um, so with respect to inclusive language, I think um, it's something that you probably don't notice very easily. So for example, um, you can say, hey guys, let's all, let's all come together, let's all huddle together. Um, some people may not want to be referred to as guys, so perhaps a, uh, I'm sure today's session is about diving into different ways you can use um, words to explain not guys, but to say maybe, hey, hey team or hey people or something to that nature. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much for uh, sharing that with us, Brenda because that uh, is so true. And you touched on a really uh, interesting point there around, you know, we don't mean to exclude, 
So we're not saying like because of the terms that we're using, we necessarily want to exclude someone or discriminate, but sometimes it's unconsciously even, the words that we use can sometimes um, cause that. Anyone else um, who here is kind of doing something within the space of inclusion or within your organizations? Anyone um, kind of working in that space or part of any ERGs or employee resource groups that's doing some work around it that would like to share? Or if anyone's had another experience around inclusive language, I'd go to Mahal. Hi, um, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yep, so I work with teenagers and students. So when I walk into the classroom, I need to ensure that I'm mindful of what words I use to ensure that no one feels left out. Because our kids, they really, some of them feel have this inferiority complex. So I really need to ensure that they feel included in whatever space I'm speaking. Beautiful. Thank you so much, uh, Maha, for sharing that. And that's so uh, incredible that you actually work with kids. And it's something that we're starting early on. So it's like, you know, inclusive language isn't a corporate concept. It's not a concept that we learn once we become adults. It's just part of what we grow up with now and how we're all learning to speak. Um, I saw, Wayne, your hand was raised as well. Did you want to um, share something? Yes, I'm working off two screens. So if you see my face going between <laughs> yeah, here and here. Okay. Um, I've actually just started a new role at my job here at Yarra Tram. So I'm actually working with accessibility and working with um, with Department of Transport and, and government regulations around accessibility. So that's a new scope for me. So learning the inclusive language for people who may be with disability or people that support those with disability. It's a really, um, a really wonderful opportunity that I have here to, to do that. And this just today's presentation is um, timely to say the least. Great, great. Thank you so much for sharing that, uh, Wayne. Good luck with your new role. And uh, it sounds really interesting around accessibility. And we will touch on that a bit as well when we look at and talk about inclusive language and inclusive terms today. So thank you all for sharing that with me. I'm going to share my screen with you now. And just give me a quick thumbs up if you can see that. All right, great. So a lot of what's on that on my screen right now, we've already covered, right? You actually, in, in your sharing, raise some of that around the sense of what is inclusive language? It's really around acknowledging and respecting diversity. Now, diversity as we know it exists. There's, it's what is happening. If you look at the call right now, if you look at our teams, at the clients that we're dealing with, at the community, it is filled with beautiful, wonderful diversity. And when we use inclusive language, it allows us to bring that diversity into the conversation, allowing people to have a seat at the table. And when we do that, the language that we use, it enables us to avoid bias, slang, discrimination, expression, and, ex and exclude people based on their identity and intersectionality. And that goes beyond, you know, we, the common ones we hear are race and gender but actually goes beyond that, you know, beyond cultural diversity, sexuality, ability, like Wayne was saying, you know, he's working with people with accessibility needs at the moment. So it goes through ability, age, socioeconomic status, so much different intersectionality within the community. And that is why, that is what inclusive language is and what it allows us to do is to hear from everyone at the table. Okay, so now that we've covered what is inclusive language, we're gonna go into the why. Before I share my slide on that, I want you each to think of a time when you felt a deep sense of belonging. It could have been at school, it might have been at the workplace or a university, it could be in a team that you're volunteering with or a sport that you're playing. When you felt a great deep sense of belonging. Everyone got one? Okay. And now when you think about a time when you didn't really feel that sense of belonging, you felt a bit excluded, you didn't feel as welcome. And think about what the difference was there. What was happening when you were feeling included versus when you didn't feel as included and you felt maybe a bit excluded? And uh, I'm gonna ask someone to come off mute and share with us. If someone has, a uh, uh, 
time when they felt really included that would like to share? Raise your hand and I'll come to you. I can see Warren smiling. Is that a, I have a story, but okay, I'll go. Yes, let's go, Warren. <laughs> Great to see you, Nerissa. You Look, too. I'm, I'm going to use the one of the obvious. When when I was a leader of Speakers Tribe and, and attending those um, those gatherings, you walk into a room of um, acceptance, a room of learning and just belonging. And, it, you know, everybody is there to support you and uplift you. And it just, it's an awesome feeling. Exactly. I totally, totally agree with that. And you touched on a term there, Warren, when you said I felt included, you used the term of belonging. You used the word belonging because that's, that's what inclusion feels like. When we feel included, we feel that sense of belonging. And it's little things in our language that can make that a reality for someone. So I'm gonna share my screen now and we'll go through the why. Why is inclusive language important? So give me a thumbs up if you can see that again, yep. Yeah? All right. So firstly, it enables us to feel valued, to feel respected, to feel included. Remember we spoke about everybody having a seat at the table. And sometimes what can happen is even though everyone's sitting at the table, the language that we use sometimes can exclude those people by not allowing them to be part of the conversation, to be included when we hear from everybody, when we go to each person so they can share their thoughts, their ideas. And like Warren said, when we allow that through our conversation, people feel a greater sense of belonging. And what that does when belonging is enhanced, it also enhances our relationships and the rapport that we have with our teams, our managers, with our clients, our communities, with humanity in general. And when that happens, when that shift happens, it promotes well being. It allows for better knowledge sharing between us and better decision making because now we're hearing, we're hearing from not just the people that we always listen to and we always hear from, but we're hearing from someone that might not have spoken before in a meeting. Maybe someone that's a little bit quiet in a meeting. Maybe someone that doesn't identify with the term guys. You know, Brenda raised a, a great example there. You know, so how are we ensuring that we bring everyone into that conversation? And that is why inclusive language is so very important. Okay, so let's go into now understanding, now that we've covered the what and the why, we're gonna look at some principles. And feel free to take a screenshot of this if you'd like. We're going to look at some principles around how do we apply and incorporate inclusive language. So we're going to look at four things. People first. We're going to look at using universal terms, gender neutral language, and asking where possible. So what do I mean by these? So let's talk about the first one, people first. Now, like we've spoken about and like the stories that each of you have shared, we are all within communities that have a wide range of intersectionality in it. So it's not just, when we talk about diversity, it's not just race or not just gender or sexuality, but it's actually how that all intertwines into someone's identity. So let's use me for an example, right? I'm just one person in billions and billions of people in this um, beautiful humanity. But if you just use my example, so I identify as a person of color, uh, identify as female and non-binary. I identify as a migrant gay person of color. I have a wife and my wife lives with a disability, both physical and mental. So when you're communicating to me, there is that layers of intersectionality that my identity brings into it. In the same way, when we're speaking to someone in our team, and it's important that when we're using words and language, that we look at the person first and then all of the bits that make their identity. Now, identity is important, but it's not what we judge that person on. It's not how, what, how we define that person. So thinking about Wayne's example, where he's working in accessibility, to give you an example there, and he already used this language when he was explaining it to us, where he said, I work with people living with a disability. 
Now, sometimes what we hear is people saying a disabled person. And what that does is it puts that identity onto that person. But when we put the person first and we say a person with a disability or a person living with a disability, a person with a vision impairment, it puts the person first. So you could say rather than saying I'm an Indian person or a migrant person, you say I'm a person from India. So you put the person before all of their identity and intersectionality. Okay. The next thing we're going to look at, the next principle, is around using universal terms. And what this means is stepping back and going broader. So a classic example of this one, uh, other than you know, the one Brenda shared with us around guys, is ladies and gentlemen. Now, we've heard it so much. We have actually grown up saying it. And it's kind of become conditioned for us. So we're not necessarily saying it to exclude someone. You know, we've heard it at the Oscars. We've heard it at, at the movies. We've heard it as people introduce us. They go, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, boys and girls, welcome. And that's what we've grown up listening to. So when we say that term, we ourselves are not meaning to necessarily exclude or discriminate against anyone. But what it does is it only caters to the ladies and the gentlemen in the room. And anyone else that is sitting as part of your audience that doesn't necessarily identify as a lady or gentleman is automatically being excluded from that conversation, even though we're not meaning to, but they feel like they're not being included. You know, back to Warren's example, when he felt a great sense of belonging, like this is my team, they get me, they understand who I am, is because they're using words that bring me into that conversation. So a different term to use here when we're going more universal is going everyone, people, all, everybody. And it takes it much broader and welcomes everyone in. The next bit is around gender neutral language. And similar to that example around ladies and gentlemen, we don't want to base it based on gender because as humanity is evolving, we're learning more about gender. And we're learning that gender is fluid and it's more than just sitting between male and female and he and she. And when we use terms like mankind or fireman, it's very gendered specific. And again, we're not meaning to, it's terms that we've grown up with. But when we start thinking about how do I think about everyone sitting around this table on the Zoom conversation and not just people that are in the room, but now that the world is opening, we're talking to people virtually and in the room. We're recording sessions. People are listening past the session. So you might think, okay, I've got a few people in the room and they all I think they all identify as guys. So guys works here. But when that session is replayed, when someone leaves your room and they're talking to someone else about it, that's what they're replaying. So it's always understanding not just what who the people are in my room right now, but how can I broaden this to everybody? So Rather than mankind, humankind, humanity is, is a great way to express that. Rather than firemen, you go firefighter, which says what they do, but it takes it away from the gender. And the last principle is around asking where it's possible. Now, with this one, it is understanding, obviously, the rapport that you've built with someone and that you're comfortable to ask that question. Um, and it's kind of like, you know, when we meet, we're networking and we meet at a party and we go, hi, I'm Nerissa. And then Rain says, hi, I'm Rain. And I go, how do you pronounce that again? And then Rain tells me how she says her name. And now that I know how she's pronounced it, I'll say it the way she pronounces it. And it's the same thing around inclusive language is when we feel comfortable, then ask the question, ask people how they identify, what, what sits comfortably with them. What terminology would you like to be used? But when we're going in to ask people about this, it's not so much prying and you know, asking a bit of digging questions and finding out a bit more. The term I like to use is genuine curiosity. Genuine curiosity. Because when we come at it from a place of genuine curiosity, we come at it from a lens of acceptance a lens of awareness, a lens of wanting to know more. 
saying, well, now that I know more, I can do better. And I want to do right by you. So tell me how I can get this right. And I might get it wrong sometimes, but, but I'm coming from a place of I want to do the best by you. So tell me how we can work together. And that's what I mean by ask where possible. So I'm just going to share my screen again, and we'll just recap those four key principles around people first, use universal terms, so go broader, gender neutral language, and where possible, let's ask. And I want to share some examples. And by, by no means is this an exhaustive list. It's only a place to start. And as you move forward into the week, into the day, and you start thinking about you know, every time you speak at a presentation, I'm speaking to a client, I'm speaking at a gathering, what are some of the words am I, I'm using? How am I addressing people? What are the terms that I'm using when I speak? And let's all start getting more aware of the language that we are all collectively using. So we've gone over some of this already. We've talked about ladies and gentlemen. So it's everyone, everybody, people, all, um, rather than guys. It's friends, folks, team, crew, which is great to use. And I also just want to mention that because you can often say, well, I want to build rapport with someone, so I want to identify with them the way that they're speaking to me. And that is totally fine. If I was sitting and chatting to Craig one-on-one -on -one, and Craig went, hey, you know what? Call me one of the guys. I'm totally fine with that. So when I'm talking to Craig one-on-one, -on -one, that's how I communicate, right? But when we go out into a broader setting, into a broader space, then we want to make sure that everyone there and all those who might hear it later feel included. So it's okay when we're communicating one-on-one, -on -one, but when we go one-to-many, broader, then it's the different lens that we need to look at to say, how am I ensuring that everybody here feels included? So let me just share my screen back with you. We'll go through some more examples. So the other one is around uh, boys and girls. So again, we're taking gender out of it, children, young adults, he and she. So these are around pronouns. And the most common uh, pronouns are he, she, and they. But feel free to ask people how they identify. We're seeing pronouns now used on um, social media. People are putting them at the bottom of their uh, signatures. We're seeing it used. You know, I've got mine up uh, as part of my Zoom name. So different ways that people bring them in. And what it does is, you might just think, well, I just identify as she and her. But by, and so you're like, well, I don't really need to share my pronouns. But by you sharing yours, it then allows other people to go, well, that person's comfortable sharing mine, sharing theirs. So it allows me to share mine. Uh, other examples we've covered mankind, humankind, person with a disability rather than disabled person and a uh, normal person. Just don't use the word normal person because. We don't really mean it, but when we do it, we think, okay, well, people that I'm speaking to are normal and everyone else isn't. So just refrain from that. But um, I want to end with this quote here because it's a lovely quote by Maya Angelou, and it really sums up what inclusive language is for me, uh, where she says, do the best you can until you know better. Then when you know better, do better. And uh, that is so much around what inclusive language is. Um, I know Vanita's hand is up. Uh, we'll go to a quick question, but pop into the chat and let us know what your key takeaways are from today and what has resonated with you. And then I'm going to hand back to Rain to uh, wrap this up for us. Um, Vanita, a quick question. Thanks, Nerissa. It's a beautiful session. I have a question related to disability. I was attending one of the global inclusive workshops and in fact, they, they specifically mentioned not to use the word disability. So is there any other word that you uh, like to use it? Because um, that, again, seems to be, you know, not inclusive language. So I'm a little, yes. I like, surprised, so, yeah. Um, I, I, I tend to use the word accessibility more than uh, disability. I also like the word differently able. So we're saying we're, we're all able, but we're all just differently able. So then it takes yeah, away I the word disability. That. That's true. True, true. Thanks so much, Nerison. Fantastic. Thank yes. you so much, Vanita. If anyone else does have questions, uh, feel free to pop it in the chat and we'll capture all of that and we'll come back to you and answer your questions as well. But thank you so much for being here.